From the Edge of the Web Studios, here's what we're looking at this week. Top on our list, and we uh, we were talking about this, Bill and I were before the show. Top of the list, Google, this is from Search Engine Journal by Matt Southern. Google, Google Search Console now reports on more types of structured data. Google is adding three more types of structured data to the rich results report in Search Console. Product markup, site link search markup, and unparsable on parsable types. Now, if you're wondering what that is, all right, first you got to make sure you're inside of Google Search Console and and being able to see such a rich environment now of, of Google feedback that they're uh, they're talking to you. And if you're not listening, you need to. And, and inside of the entire structured data area of rich results, um, they've added these three key concepts. And I'm going to pivot around to Bill and and let Bill kind of unpack why structured data is so important, what these three new elements actually really mean. Bill, take it away. Okay, uh, schema markup came about uh, in 2011 mm -hmm. from uh, a joint effort by a number of search engines, uh, Google, Microsoft, Yahoo, and later Yandex. Uh, it's not an actual standard of the web, but it's a group effort like sitemap, XML sitemaps are. Right. Uh, it's intended to be machine readable only, so it's not accessible uh, like web accessibility where it's uh, something that is shown to be uh, like all, all tags on images, mm -hmm. not intended to be read by people. It's intended to go along with the content you have on your web page and present that information in a more structured format so that there's more preciseness. Uh, and it's one of the fastest growing areas of SEO. It's, uh, at this point in time, it's something that they're now updating monthly. And they're adding new schema features. Schema is an independent organization. It's not Google, it's not Yahoo. Mm -hmm. But if you go to Google's developer pages, you'll see how they implement schema from uh, schema.org. So last year when they came out with the uh, speakable markup yep. for, for schema, uh, Google came out with a beta version of speakable markup early before schema actually approved speakable markup. And they said, We'll include the, We'll look at this on news web pages. If you, uh, and it was intended to be for more than just news web pages. It was intended to be for all websites. Mm -hmm. But they said, well, well, if you're a news organization, you use a schema markup. We'll look at it. We'll decide whether or not we want to use your spoken uh, answers to questions you as you designate by speakable markup. Uh, on Google speaker devices. Right. So there's, there's, I mean, I, I it, it's, it's not even fair to call this the new meta, but I mean, it is behind the scenes. It does allow a level of preciseness and accuracy, obviously, inside of uh, in tagging your content correctly. Other markups uh, that join this uh, are, are inside the rich results report on Google Search are events, FAQs, fact-checked, how-to uh, schemas, uh, job posting, logos, QA pages, recipes. Those are what Google's sharing back with you that it sees. But it sees a heck of a lot more than what's, what they're letting on in Search Console, right? We had John Mueller tell us last week that uh, they're not necessarily looking at things like who the author of the article is on, on uh, using scheme markup. Mm -hmm. They can sort of discern that from web pages. Sure. But when you're, when you're writing those web pages and you're creating schema and it gives you a chance to put down who the author of the article is, uh, who the reviewer of it is, maybe edited it, it doesn't hurt to include those things because no. at some point they may be looking at those and you're just uh, making yourself ready 
and giving yourself a competitive advantage when they do start possibly using those types of things. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we from the edge highly recommend uh, deploying schema when you're publishing your content. And if you, I mean, there's certainly tools out there that make it very easy to roll that out. And, you know, it, it does go to, we've seen, you know, web development over the years that unfortunately just get kind of lazy. They don't do accessibility quite well, or they even well know about accessibility rules and guidelines. But uh, in the same vein, we or the, is, implementation of schema is certainly going to set the rate, the, the wheat from the chaff. So as you roll through your content, um, it's part of the, the, the publishers, the digital publishers um, uh, uh, check, checklist, it should be, to make sure that the scheme is populated as well. Just don't ignore those fields because they are going to be immensely valuable in the future, right? Are you familiar with GS1? GS1? I am not. I'm sorry. It's the organization that came out with barcodes about 40 years ago. And all the scanners that uh, uh, barcodes are scanned with in, in supermarkets right. when we check out, uh, those were developed by GS1. Got and it. GS1 came out with the schema last year. And they were approved. So it's an official schema for... Uh, e-commerce websites. Mm -hmm. And there's a wizard on the GS1 site that you can use to build your schema that you can include uh, GTIN tags uh, oh. and other stuff like that that's helpful. Oh, in fantastic. E and it's worth looking up. Absolutely. Absolutely. So again, highly recommend uh, our, our listeners and our, and our, our viewers always uh, take these Take these tips to heart because they are incredibly valuable. Um, give you some more information from Search Engine Round, table by Barry Schwartz. Um, Google My Business adds bulk reviews for multiple listings. Google wrote, uh, and this, we're going to be talking about local search here in a second. Google wrote, businesses can now uh, re view reviews for multiple listings at once with bulk reviews. You'll be able to re view, reply to, and flag reviews for multiple listings from one place. Uh, we're seeing a heck of a lot more investment of uh, uh, of of uh, util uh, tools and and uh, opportunities to be able to manipulate data inside of Google My Business, Bill, uh, are you seeing this uh, this growth as one of the the kind of the new new frontiers of brand building and engagement with consumers? I'm excited about uh, local search, and I have been for years. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's sort of a, a alternative way to index the web. It's uh, different from uh, information retrieval and, and uh, authority like PageRank to rank pages. It's it's based upon distance, relevance of a title and category, mm -hmm. uh, what they call location prominence, which is how often you're mentioned or cited in places. Uh, and there was something that came out last week that I wrote about, a patent which talked about Quality visits. Oh yes, yes, yes. Uh, hold on, hold, hold on. I want to go over that in the interview. <laughs> Don't spill all the candy on the desk yet, <laughs> because it was very, very important. Um, uh, what actually uh, Google is talking about on top of that, that patent that they just got granted, it is it is a huge factor for local businesses. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yank you back here because I want to dive into that with the interview. Um, third article from Marketing Land. We always want to throw in uh, a bit of uh, uh, trending topics, uh, especially when it comes down to podcasting. Podcast listening growth continues. Mobile app usage is up 60% since January 2018. That is huge. 25% of the listeners have bought products discovered through podcast advertising. You hear us? Hear that, sponsors? 25% of listeners have bought Products discovered through podcast advertising. Podcast mobile app usage has risen 60% since January 2018, and the sector's growth is expected to continue as as 40, 45% of the listeners said they plan on tuning into more podcasts in the future, according to the study by Adobe Analytics. So um, I mean, podcasts are obviously here to stay. And yeah, I saw a bit of a no bit of noise here recently regarding our podcast, The New Blog. Um, 
or a blog type. And you know, the fact of the matter is podcasts are, are unique to a level of consumption that no other uh, marketing mediums really had had because you have that intimate relationship with that listener. They're, uh, it's, it's even more intimate than getting into your email b inbox. It, you're literally, the users are voting with their downloads and they're spending time with you and there's such a level of advocacy and authenticism inside of inside of podcasts that you never get on any other platform. Bill, uh, are, you, are, are you a big uh, uh, podcast listener? And what are your thoughts about that, that report that you saw there? I'm not a big podcast listener. I've been listening to a lot of audio books, yep. which isn't quite the same thing, but, but it reminds me of it. And the fact that it's easy to listen to a book really, really shows that there's value in understanding the attraction of audio. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I'm, I'm reminded of old time radio. Yeah. You know, uh, listen to some like vintage radio broadcasts of, of uh, stuff like War of the Worlds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Loved it. Uh, you know, the, the fact of the matter is uh, what you're talking about is, is we are, uh, as a new media audience, we're really – um, deciding how we really want to consume to so the, the, the sheer point that that you're reading you're reading audiobooks as opposed to Kindle, right? Yeah. There's a huge adoption of audiobooks because we just don't have time, and you know, we can consume it easy on the on the commute. We can on commute. We can multitask. We're finding new areas in which we can actually learn more. And, and I mean, the audience is sending these signals. 60% increase uh, in mobile app usage for podcasts e explicitly since January of last year. That is a huge jump. And boy, I mean, you, you, we see that from the sponsorship um, uh, uh, factors, the advertising factors inside of podcasts. It's starting to stabilize. But, um, you know, is it the new blog? I, I mean, I think blogs are actually... They were they they've been in the realm of of quick insights where podcasts you can deep dive right. I'm not quite sure that you can go directly to a point in a podcast like you can with a blog. You're right. However, Google is now parsing through all this content, and there and we just reported on it last week that now podcasts are making its way to search results. So they're digesting this content and looking at relevant podcasts as it applies to the search algorithm uh, that we're about to dive into here today. So they're they're knowledgeable about what you've talked about, not just a headline, not just. Uh, a, a, a particular subject matter, they're they're deep diving into this content. You gotta gotta believe that they're transcribing it for themselves, so they know what, we call, what we're all talking about. So you could very well go eventually go to a point in a podcast from a Google search. <laughs> Who knows? It could be very well be right there, right? Hey, clients who who uh, had lots of video on their site and they hadn't transcribed those. And that was one of the first things we recommended to them, that they provide transcripts of those videos. Yeah, and and they were they were they had a huge audience already because they had a, a national public radio station uh, uh, that their their broadcasts would go out to, like nine million people. So getting that content mm -hmm. in transcripts boosted traffic to the website tremendously. Well, it's black gold when it comes down to SEO. It's, it's content that's never existed on the face of the planet before. Yeah. And it's also not peppered with manipulation inside of with keyword density and, and, and other potentially spammy factors of SEO. It's authentic. It's real. It's organic. And, I mean, that's, that's literally what Google's wanting to see and wanting to consume. So, I mean, if you're not transcribing video or you're not transcribing audio, then, then you need to jump in there because that is uh, part and parcel for, for uh, uh, good execution on what you're already doing. So just take the, take the steps and, uh, you know, 
throw out a, throw out a little bit of dollars to 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 uh, certainly uh, get that transcription and populate on the site. In fact, in fact, in fact our, on our own podcast, we're continually uh, transcribing and putting that content out there on site strategics to be able to have that rich blanket of content coming out of out of the show. So with that. We, uh, yeah, there's the news there for this week. There's certainly much more news uh, that we didn't cover. Always check out uh, uh, what we're doing on, on the show over at Edge of the Web Radio. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more of our content or especially more of this week's featured guest, including a full-length interview, head on over to YouTube and search for Edge of the Web. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you want to see digital marketing news as it happens.